One second. Okay. One. One. That's some nice whoop ass. Dang. What? Some whoop. Some nice what? Whoop ass. It's a, he's opening up a can of whoop ass. No. I've never heard I, of that. S- I'm, I'm sorry. What the fuck is whoop ass? You'll find out soon enough. Oh, oh. Boy, okay. Disclaimer. We do not own or claim ownership of the Pokemon franchise and any Pokemon established in official canon. That's all owned by Nintendo, Game Freak, and Creatures. This is just a podcast made by four friends who love Pokemon. It's our love letter to a franchise most of us grew up with. So please go support the official release. Previously on PKMN Legacy. You rush over to the backyard. Stop, stand Diamond, up, stop. No, no more, no more. If I catch you doing anything like this again, be taking you downtown. We might not be getting paid for this job. King of the Mountain Brawl. 16 will make it to the tournament. I'm kind of annoyed I didn't get to finish what I was doing in there. I would easy. And you fall flat onto the ground. <laughs> Pow! One of the grunts in Team Magma, Travis. We get the flashback episode. A dark-skinned lady with aqua grunt garb and a bandana that goes over her pompadour. Now sitting among the judges says to you, that concludes your triad. A public announcement on who will be moving forward will be made in the next few days. I thought you were drinking ranch soda. No, stop. No, no, see, remember, it was butter soda. Stop. No, it was both. Mix them together, and what do you got? Bippity boppity <laughs> Speaking of ranch, maybe not exactly it coincides with ranch, but I learned of a new, like, flavor combination that I didn't know needed to exist until, like, this week. Okay. Oh. Fried pickles and buffalo sauce. Ooh. Excuse me? As a soda or the actual food? The actual food. The actual food. Oh, okay. okay. As a soda... <laughs> Oh, I got no, the, for a that there. food actually sounds really good. I love pickles; they're delicious. So, and buffalo sauce—I don't have frequently enough, but I probably really so like, like it. specifically deep fried pickles. Deep like fried. the fried oily acidiness of the pickles combined with the spiciness of like the buffalo sauce. Something about it just hits in a way that I didn't know I needed in this world. Honestly, there's a twisted southern part of me that understands this. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, sorry, I know you're in here. Hi, honey. Hi. Is that the missus? That is the missus. She's getting the cat litter? Cat litter. Tell her I said hi. Me too. Oh. Honey, hello. Kay and uh, Chi say, and Ariana say hello. Okay, the door's closed, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. Right now, it is about evening. The lamps are back on, and everyone is going their separate ways. Um, as you are getting ready to leave, where are you guys heading? I think we were heading to the Pokemon Center. Yeah. If I'm cor- is I correct in that assumption? Yeah. I think so. I-, I think we all need a rest. I mean, Chi-Chi, I know that Velma has, like, full health, but <laughs> me and Dryer are, are on our way down. <laughs> that one hit into the sand pit really did a number on Chris, so yeah, Pokemon <laughs> Center. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, the three of you make your way back to the Pokemon Center as you pass by the old residential area where you remember seeing that one lady who you tried to help out. Didn't really work out. Uh, you notice that she is heading from the front porch into her back garden. She is packing right now and sense that she is armed with a broom and a sauce pot as a helmet, wearing some padded, like, spare wreck equipment in order to gear up for whatever she's about to do. Do we do we need to investigate that, or do we just sort of leave her alone? I think we might want to leave her alone. Okay. Uh, did we get a catch of, like, what her facial expression looks like? Does she look normal, scared? Why don't you make an insight check? Oh, boy. Plus empathy. Oh, boy. <laughs> plus what? Insights plus empathy. Oh, plus empathy. I thought you said insight plus a negative three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Negative three. I was like, wow, so she's clearly passed. That would have not gone well. Three out of five. Uh, Chris, it's pretty clear to tell that she is... You got a two out of four I rolled. I thought we were all Oh, that was Ariana's roll, three out of five. I got Two out of four. I thought we were all rolling. Either way, you both can look on her face. You both know the mixture of both, like, pump, trying to pump yourself up to get into, like, a fighting spirit, as well as anxiety. (laughs) 
Oh. I want to talk to her. <laughs> they want to leave her alone. I want to talk to her. <laughs> okay. Is this the same lady that we helped out with our garden before or a completely different lady? This is the same lady that you left the uh, your two jewel-type Pokemon oh in her yard to uh, cause havoc. No, this is perfect because Maddie doesn't know about that. Oh, no. oh, I guess that would be true. It was only... Uh, I think she only caught glimpses of them being like, we're not talking about it, and then like running away. I don't think Maddie knows what happened. Including the talk to with Officer Jenny. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think I was. Okay, so and yeah. if I was, then Maddie's just a himbo. It's fine. Okay, yeah. Then I then do what you will. So she goes up to her and she's like, hey, <laughs> what are you getting prepared for? <laughs> just, um, sorry, you caught me off guard there. Oh, it's, sorry, sorry. I'm new in town. <laughs> I've been having some problems in the garden with some predators on the prowl destroying my prized herbs and I've tried getting outside help but that hasn't really worked so it's up to me to finish the job. You're going to fight them yourself? If that's what it takes to save my garden then yes. Well perhaps me and my team could help you. Your team? Yes. (laughs) Maddie looks over and gestures towards Chris and Velma. <gasps> oh, no, 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 no. What's this the matter? They're part of the problem. I, they they had released those strange white iridescent monsters out and causing lasers to shoot up in the sky. I am not having that near my house at all. <laughs> Maddie, Maddie, like, slowly, like, she's got the smile on her face and she, like, slowly turns around towards them with a the smile still on her face with the, like, <laughs> noise. <laughs> What did you two do? Bella just does the whole look around with the... Uh, Chris is is just like... This is my kind of behavior. How did you two manage to do that? Slowly walking away. I will be the first to admit that this is normally something that I would do. How am I the responsible one in this situation? Uh, If you're part of their group as well, then I don't want your help at all. Get just... Be on your way. You know what? I have work to do. I totally understand. Listen, if you need help and change your mind, because I don't have one of those scary Pokemon that you were talking about, um, is it possible for me to, like, give her my contact info? Uh, I suppose it is. Uh, but this would be cool, plus I'll give you the choice between empathy or etiquette. I think Maddie's better at etiquette, so I'll do etiquette. Two out of two? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't really. I mean, if you must, I suppose I can take your sea gear number, but I'm only calling you in case of emergencies. Otherwise, I'm handling this on my own. Of course. And Maddie hands out her sea gear, and she's like, you can just put your details in there, and I'll, I'll send you a message. Very well. Uh, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> as she puts it in, uh, you look at the entry, and, it's, and it reads as, uh, looking for names I can use. One moment. <laughs> It says Miss Tracy. Mm, Miss Tracy. Actually, we never asked her name, did we? <laughs> well, thank you, Miss Tracy. And I'm I'm sorry about my friends before. I'm sure they were just trying to help, and maybe they got in a little over their heads. We've all been there, right? She says nothing to confirm or deny this. Okay. Well, you have a good day. Good night. And she marches back to the yard, broom in hand. <laughs> So that totally <laughs> went well, right? Listen, I don't know what you two did, and it's okay because I can't pretend that I haven't done worse things. But <sighs> I'm learning that it does not hurt to make amends with people. Perhaps she will be somebody that we can help in the future. Wait, so if you're not opposed to making amends with people, does that mean you're gonna you're gonna make up with that the uh, What's that, Chad? Did I don't Chad? don't even bring him up. Okay. <laughs> that is deep history. That is a different situation. But I mean, you just said you don't mind. He has to apologize first because I was apologizing for what you two did. He needs to apologize for what he did. I did okay, nothing. Fair enough. I did nothing. Fair, fair enough. Well, this has been a very interesting and very uh, invigorating day. So can we can we get some sleep, please, please? Who are you talking to? <laughs> God. You hear nothing. <laughs> you hear nothing? <laughs> Why does the Lord not speak to me? Arceus has forsaken me. So to the Pokemon Center we head to. And I don't know if my Pokemon need healing. I'm not sure if they need healing, but uh, 
that I would like to do as well. As you head back to the Pokemon Center, oh, yeah, wait. oh where did the tent what, go? Oh. What happened to the tent? Work begins to take down the tent as tryouts have concluded. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just laughing because I saw the tent disappear and it only left Velma in the center. And I'm just imagining Velma in like the crackling flames and ruins of this tent, <laughs> just cackling evilly. Oh my god, it's like that one that one picture of the burning house and the toddler looking back smiling. Yes! Wait! That needs to be drawn! The tent burning and Velma just looking back with the smile. <laughs> yes. Oh no! Yes. Alright. That's amazing. Okay, anyway. Would you three like to do anything before you hit the hay for the night and regain your hit points? We don't find out the results of the tryouts till tomorrow, right? It may be a few days before try okay. the results are revealed. Okay. Um, then I'm good. I'm solid. I don't think there's anything I need to do. No, I'm good. The night goes by. Three wake up. Get ready to get your stuff on. Maddie. Yes. As you are preparing for the day. Uh, what are you doing? Okay, I kind of want to get to know uh, Bay, my wiffle pen. Sure. You can begin with some downtime in a bit. Yeah, so I think that's just kind of on Maddie's agenda today. Um, she's kind of going with the flow today. She got what she wanted. Tryouts are done. Now it's the waiting game. So she's just getting ready, washing her face, maybe doing a little morning face mask. Sure. As you are putting the cosmetics away, you close the communal mirror, little cabinet, and in the reflection... Oh my god, Becky, Becky. It's been so long since I've seen you, it feels. Huh. And he toddles around, sticks up a leg, and you see another note attached to it. Ah, thank you. And she grabs it and opens it. It is written in very elegant Kalusian cursive. Maddie, I have received your sketches and I must say I am intrigued. I was expecting something made to be worn by human models, like in your previous designs. But this elegant circlet you've designed for the Houndoos looks quite promising. You have been approved to proceed with this design by the board. For your next assignment, you'll need to create a wearable prototype, document its construction, and include a picture of it being worn. If a Houndoom is not available, any Pokémon with a similarly canine cranium will do. Please send the above materials along with Pecky Pecky within a week's time. I look forward to seeing your creativity blossom. Professor Bourgeois. Maddie closes the note and she kind of smiles to herself. She had been feeling kind of down ever since Laze stole her uh, designs. And I think uh, trying something new had been sort of a way for her to feel like she had a fresh start and could regain her creativity again. So it means a lot to her to hear Professor Bourgeois say that. So she just kind of smiles to herself and she gives Pecky Pecky a little pat on the head. And she says, great, thanks. I'll be sure to send something along with you in a week's time. So I'll see you soon, okay? <laughs> Disappears. <laughs> Just apparates out of existence. God, that's mortifying. Pecky Pecky's a, a Zatu, right? Or Natu, right? Natu. A little Natu. Natu. Just a little ball of feathers. So cute. Seriously, though, have we not summoned Pecky Pecky during a fight? I, can I? Can we? I mean, I can summon I'm him. I'm pretty sure... If you say the words Pecky Pecky, doesn't it just appear? It's like Bloody Mary. <laughs> you have been given instructions. You can call Pecky Pecky by saying its name three times. Look, <laughs> no. uh, provide that you are in a safe location and like a, a town and not in like the middle of a battle. You right. can call him. He'll pop in. Will I get in trouble for calling on him to assist for small tasks? You don't know. <laughs> you haven't tried before. I can say that. Is he Professor Bourgeois' Pokemon? Yes. Okay. It's okay. like his little assistant. Oh, I should have sent him with like an apple. Or a butter soda. <laughs> no, no. I would have been expelled. Glad we are clear on that. <laughs> the Colosians would be kuwaking. I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at this morning. You said you wanted to do some uh, training and getting to know uh, your Whiffle Pin, correct? Yeah. And maybe I kind of want to bring out Bat Noir to watch. So that Bat Noir can get more comfortable knowing that I'm not evil. Okay. Um, it is daytime, so you're going to need to find somewhere Some safe for the Bat Noir. Yeah. yeah. In that fountain area where the tent was, I'm assuming it's pretty bare and open, right? There's not a lot of trees because the tent had to go somewhere. I'm sure there could be a couple trees here and there. Let's, let's sit underneath the tree. Um, I haven't done much in the way of getting to know them, training them. I, I think we did that one main session and then... Dry's done a couple other ones. So I think mostly I just want to get the terrified Pokemon less terrified and the new Pokemon more familiar and comfortable with me. Um, so Maddie's going to start first by taking out Bat Noir. She doesn't want to startle him. 
with another Pokemon right off the bat. <laughs> um, basically just like sitting a distance away and seeing how he reacts. I think Bat Noir is going to uh, look around, realize he's under a tree, going to flutter up, hang upside down on the branch, well tucked away in the shade. And he observes you with his lack of eyes. Oh, little baby man. I know you don't get a lot of time to just sit and chill outside of your Pokeball, and I'm going to uh, get to know one of our other friends here, but I wanted to let you know that you have a little more freedoms than you might feel like you do. I want you to feel at home with me, okay? I'm, I'm trying to start off on a new uh, foot or wing. So enjoy your time, have fun. And if you need anything, don't be afraid to ask. And that's when she starts to bring out the Whiffleton and lets out Bay. Yeah, this would be the first time that you've released Whifflepin, so Bay looks around, dazed. Meow, meow, meow. Oh, you're so cute. I knew that was the right decision. He said he or she. Let me check the notes real quick. Whifflepin is a she. Oh, little baby gal. It's a bush baby. The little baby berry gal waddles over to you, sniffs your ankle, because that's about the height it comes to. I was going to say, how tall? So, so like a hedgehog almost? Yeah. Like that small? A grassy little hedgehog. Oh, really tiny. So tiny. I like want a plushie of this guy. I might have to make that. Hi, my name's Maddie, and your name is now Bay, which in Colosian means berry. I just like to do that with names, I guess. Anyway, you're really cute. I'm your new trainer. And I just wanted to get to know you. I'm, I'm trying to get better about starting off on the right foot with my new Pokemon. So what sort of activity would you do with Bay? Well, we're in a park. I want to play hide and seek. <laughs> That's adorable. Okay, cute plus lore. Also, I just realized why I like this Pokemon so much, and it's because one of my folk my Pokemon. One of my favorite Pokemon is Shaman, oh. the other hedgehog Pokemon. Yeah, it's like a Shaman, but less insufferable. Oh, oh yeah, he was very annoying in the movie. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. I've seen it, but I love Shaman. That is two out of three for your training. The Wivelpin sort of take, takes a slow waddle as it looks around as you're hiding behind trees or fountains. There's not a lot of good hiding places here. When it's your turn to look for her, though, uh, it's much harder. Yes. It's not until a couple minutes later before you find her blending in with the other shrubbery. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh, you're so good at this. Wow. And she kind of casts a glance over at Bat Noir just to see what's going on over there. You turn just in time to see that he was very fixated on what you two were doing. But then as you look around and he like, turns his gaze elsewhere. Okay. Maddie's going to play a couple more rounds. She looks at Bay and she says, do you want to play again? You are really good at it. Yeah. Okay, I'll count this time again because I know how much you like hiding. And go. One, two, three. All right, and as 30 passes, you open your eyes. It takes a while to find it. Somehow it got into one of the trees and it was blending in with the foliage. Oh. Is it the same tree as Bat Noir's? Uh, yes. Um, so Maddie kind of realizes the last place that she hasn't looked is this tree where Bat Noir is chilling. And she catches a little glimpse of the red little berries from Bay's fur. She walks up slowly to try and make it obvious that she's not trying to disturb Bat Noir. She's like, Bay, I am still looking for you. Where are you? Bat Noir keeps a reasonable distance away as you climb up. But other than that, it doesn't seem to hide or flinch as you climb. Maddie finds Bay and she's like, I got you. You're so cute. Okay. And she, she casts a glance over Bat Noir and she says, Hey, do you want to try playing with us? We could find a cave somewhere next time. A beat of silence before you hear a uh, attentive squeak. Okay. Well, I don't want to push you too hard, and it is pretty bright outside, so next time we find a cave, it's you and me, okay? You ready to go back into your Pokeball, or do you want to hang out more? Uh, he nods at the first. Yeah, okay. And she calls him back into the Pokeball. As you recall those two Pokemon, and training concludes, you have two successes that you can divide amongst either Bat Noir or, or Bay. I'll give each one. Okay. Chris. Yes? How are you getting up and preparing for the day? I'm so glad you asked because Chris is actually awake very early in the morning. And by morning, I mean, it was probably around like 
dawn when he woke up. He couldn't sleep, actually. He's too busy thinking about that individual that looked too much like that person back when he was in Team Magma. Pretty much just sort of thinking a lot, trying to figure out, like, if it was the same person or if he's just, like, having a moment. He probably would act a little more tired than normal, but he would get up, have a shower, get breakfast, hit downstairs, and grab his Pokemon, which I think Victor did need to be healed, so I'd, he'd probably just grab that. That'd be the only one. Question. Answer. Would I be able to ask one of the Nurse Joys if they know much more about that specific individual? I'm sorry if I don't remember their name. Um, which individual are you talking about, sir? Um... They were at the battle tent yesterday, uh, blue hair, sort of pompadour, wears glasses. Oh, one of the, uh, the judges. Yes. Yes, I think her name is uh, AJ? I, I didn't get a good read on her. I believe she, uh, is, is the, uh, assistant for the mayor of Newton Town, actually. Assistant to the mayor? Hmm. And do you know how long she's gonna be staying here, or is that just sort of unknown? I don't really know for sure. I'm mostly behind here. Hey, Kay, question. Does Chris remember everybody that was in the tryouts as judges? There were three judges. One was AJ, the, the pompadour lady in blue. The second was some Mogul Corp employee. The third was Lauren, the gym leader. He says, thank you very much for handling my Pokemon. And thank you for the information as well. I hope you have a good day and we'll be back later on. And he's going to walk outside the Pokemon Center, and he's going to take out a Sea Gear. Then he'll contact uh, Angel from Mobile Corp, if he can. We have her contact information, don't we? Let's check your Sea Gear contact list. Uh, Ooh, I love that you have that. Let's take a look. You have the general number for the Mogul Corp's Media Retrieval and Research Department. Ooh. Uh, not the one specifically for Angel, but... Maybe you could uh, call and see if you could forward it to her or something. Okay. Oh, you got to add Miss Tracy. That is true. I got to add that to the list of contacts. Miss Tracy? The lady that you guys messed up her garden. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I have that. Uh, so Chris pulls out a sea gear and he contacts Mobile Corps Media Retrieval and Research Department. <laughs> 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 uh, and a male voice answers... Yes, you've called the Media Retrieval and Research Department of Mogul Corp. Who may I ask is calling? Uh, yes, hi. My name is Christopher Gray. I was just wondering if I could be transferred over to Angel at Mogul Corp. Uh, yes. Uh, can I ask, uh, what your purpose is? Uh, yes, just general information regarding me- Meteor Retrievals. I believe we might be, I might have found something around the area of Pippintown. Oh, very good. Uh, one moment, I'll patch you through her. <laughs> Yes, hello, this is Angel. Oh, hi, Angel. It's me, Chris. I know we just recently had a conversation a couple days ago, but first and foremost, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for, uh, how's it going? Uh, yeah, no, good. Currently in Pippin Town, uh, just exploring and whatnot. Now, I know you're a very, very busy individual, so I won't take up too much of your time, but, uh, do you know anybody that works in the Meteor Retrieval Department, uh, named AJ? AJ? I don't think so. No, um, but no. would that name ring a bell to you at all? You're going to have to be more specific. Uh, okay, uh, so there was, I believe, an individual at Mogul Corps who was one of the judges here at this battle tent in Pippin Town. Uh, there were two other individuals, which were the gym leader here in Pippin Town and an individual named AJ that happens to be the mayor's assistant for, ne- for Newton Town. Um, let me think. Um, one second. You hear some muttering in the background as she's assumingly talking to some of her peers. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, was it like a, uh, black hair, glasses, sort of a, uh, square face? Yes, yes, actually, yes. Oh, that was probably Gabe. Do you happen to know why he might have been... I'm sorry if I'm asking a lot of questions, but do you happen to know why he was a judge, or is that... Something Mogul Corp sort of endorsed here. Well, see, Mogul Corp's one of the sponsors for the, the tournament. And I think they, I, 
Like, I, he works a different department than me, so I, but I'm pretty sure that, like, one from each pe person in charge of the uh, whole thing had to be there. So, like, one from the people from Newtontown, one from the Pokemon League, one from Mogacorp, uh, just so, so it covers all the bases, so it's not just one whole organization managing the whole thing. I see. Quick question, do you happen to know if he's still staying here in Pippin Town? And where I might find him, I just had a couple of questions I wanted to ask him that he might be able to answer because I think they might be, uh, they're more specific tailored to him than they are to you. Um, yeah, I can, uh, let me do some looking up and I will see if I can find something. Um, why don't I give you my personal cell so I don't really, uh, keep this line busy and... I'll let you know if I find it. That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Angel. And again, sorry, you know, for calling you on your time working, but you have been a great help to me. No problem. Uh, anything meteor related? Uh, he did say that you were calling about meteors. Yes, I did want to know, do you know what's currently happening with that giant meteor that we gave to you? Oh, that's been taken down to research, and they're running some tests on it right now, actually. Ooh, is it? Do you think, have they come up with any results, or is that class, sort of classified information? Uh, well, I haven't been told yet, so I have no clue, honestly. Oh, fair enough. But if you find anything more, any any of those uh, meteors or any of those weird Pokemon that the boss mentioned, uh, just uh, give me a ring. Or give, well, I guess give the actual professional line a ring, and then they'll contact me, I guess. That sounds like a good idea. Well, once again, thank you, Angel, and I'll be in contact soon. Sure thing. All right. I'll have Chris wait around the battle tent area, just to sort of just as a... I guess it's uh, it would be a place where I guess all of us would meet up at, I suppose. Sure. In the meantime, let's cut over to Velma. How are you getting ready for the day? I think Velma wants to get some training in with her Pokemon. Okay, what do you have in mind? We're supposed to try to get a little bit better communication going with Mafia. Oh, you're Jewel-type mischievous. Yeah. Out by the river. Like further, maybe a little bit further from town. We'll say that you take it on the complete other side of town behind the residential area way behind the school near the hills. Okie dokie. And the river is flowing by. You let out Mafia. The amalgam of floating gems and orbs is just hovering in place. Okay, how are we gonna do this? One second. As Dry would say, all right, one. <laughs> I just had to take care of real quick. Okay, so, Mafia. You're a little new around here, so why don't we do a little bit of get to getting to know each other, you know? What do you say to that? Float. <laughs> float. <laughs> float. <laughs> yeah, so, since you're a little shy, why don't we first start with a little introduction with everybody else? Minion first. And she just tosses out her Pokeball and pops out Minion. Uh, Minion flutters in the air, seeing Mafia also there. He's a bit on guard. Last time he saw her, it was not in good circumstances. Now, now maybe I, I get it, I get I get the apprehension, but now Mafia's a friend, you see? They're friends! Mafia, this is Minion. Minion, Mafia. Mafia, Minion. Minion, Mafia. You see? So this is just basically a meet and greet is the activity you want to do? Yes. Okay. Uh, that would be cool plus... Lore. Lore. It's basically your knowledge of Pokemon as you are raising them. Cool plus lore. Two out of three. Minion very carefully floats a bit to greeting range with Mafia, lets out some insectoid chirps. Mafia, on the other hand, lets out a distorted... <laughs> like a child crying. Half uh, out like progress, I think. Some kind? Why do you make those noises? Float, 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 float. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you make an insight check? Insight plus lore. This is not the training role. This is just the role to just to try and get a read on the unreadable. Two out of four. Much like Diamond, Mafia seems to be a strange creature to say the least with an inability to express any emotions as far as you can tell. There's no facial expression, no movement that you can try to anthropomorphize. The only strange thing that it does, aside from exist, is these distorted screeches 
that sounds sort of like a woman wailing, but with like a lot of artifacting and like it was a digital recording, but messed up in the process. Hmm. It doesn't sound digital, but it has that sort of messed up quality to it. Ah, I see. Other than that, it's hard to get a read on it because there's nothing really to read, as far as you can tell. Uh, can I play fetch with it? Just to set, kind of see, examine its behavior with it? Uh, sure, go ahead. I'll crack you. I'll, I'll find out what you are, somehow. But first, why don't we get to know you a little better in action? And I think she'll just take up a, a Pokeball. Well, it's a ball, so it'd probably work. And she gives it as far of a toss she can. She's like, go fetch it, Mafia! You toss it into the distance. Uh, it lands on the ground. She turns to it and... A one out of three will hit as she begins to send up like a beam of light from her one eye towards the thing. And you can see that it is engulfed in a red light. You can see the top of it begin to rust a bit. Wow, that's a... Uh, hmm. and, it be- and it's slowly beginning to deteriorate. Oh, okay, okay, that's enough, okay, that's enough. Uh, good catch, good catch. And whew, the uh, energy dissipates and you're left with a rather worn, rusty Pokeball. Probably still operable, but greatly deteriorated from its former form. Well, that was unexpected. Huh. That could be useful for later on. With that training concluded, you have two successes that I will assign to Mafia. Sweet! As you're preparing to head back into town, you get a ring on your phone. Tell me, what is the ringtone you have associated with Piali? <laughs> I think it'd be like an alarm, like... Bruh, 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 like a very like nasty alarm sound. Like a security alarm type thing, yeah. You can see your, your mom's name on the contact information. Do you answer it? Thelma will answer it. Click. Hello? Oh, good. I was hoping that you would pick up. I wanted to give you some time as to give you a sense of independence, but a week is a bit much, wouldn't you say? Hold on, it's been a week? Ten days, actually. But who's counting? Right. So, how are you? I'm fine. I got a group. Oh, I'm fine. You made a group. Great, I was hoping you would. Who are they? What sort of people are you traveling with? Uh... One of them's this dad from Hoenn, and uh, the other's Clothin. I think she like fashion design or something. <laughs> you think? He goes to school for it, so yeah. Oh, lovely. And uh, another Hoenn person. That's nice. What are their names? <laughs> she's she's looking up our social media. Oh boy. <laughs> She'll find them on MySpace. Trying to find us on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris and Maddie. Ah, that's, that's nice. Um, and how are you doing? Are you doing well? Are you eating properly? Are you staying out of trouble? I'm fine. It's been ten days, Velma. I, I'd like a bit more than just I'm fine. I've been doing gym bells. I'm traveling around. I'm fine. Listen, I gotta go. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you another time. Right. Okay, I'll talk to you soon then. Bye. Click. Well, I think that's enough stream for today, so why don't we head back? <laughs> yeah, me too. Alrighty, the pain episode. <laughs> ow. I'm sensing. That's some, uh, ow. <laughs> yikes. We're back. Welcome back to the pause menu. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Happy New Year. This is the first broadcasted episode of 2024. And I have been away for a while, ever since the last episode. And that's because I got burnt out around the end of last year. I'm still feeling a little burnt out, but we got a show to do, so we're chugging along anyways. Speaking of which, I wanted to thank all of you guys who have been supporting the show despite our hiatus. Especially all of you on Patreon. Uh, We do have a Patreon if you're interested in joining. Get rewards like your name in the end credits of the YouTube releases of the episodes, access to behind-the-scenes bonus tidbits, and for our Ultra Baller tier patrons, you get your name mentioned here verbally by me in the pause menu. 
So, special thanks to Bambouri, Cami Cat, Cybernetic Pink Eye, Donkey Odo, Doodle Boy, Javon, Jonathan Jesus Macias, Limus Humane, Mr. Someone, Quest, Renamon Music Box Brony, and Unoriginal. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show. Apparently, you can also join our Patreon as a free member. I'll let you guys know. There's not really any benefit to being a free patron. All the extra rewards and bonuses, those are for the paying tiers. So I don't know why you join as a free patron, but you're literally free to do so if you want. You do you, I guess. But moving away from Patreon, uh, there are other ways you can support the show for free and still get some added benefits from it. You can tweet about the show using the hashtag PKMNLegacy. You can leave a good comment on the YouTube releases, or you could leave a good review on wherever you downloaded this podcast. Do that, and like our paying Patreon members, we might name one of our NPCs after you, like we did with Miss Tracy. She was named after Trace on Patreon. We got AJ, named after at AJWhereArtThou on Twitter. And we got Gabe, named after Gabe on Patreon. I actually have something I'd like to plug for you. Maybe you've seen it already. Maybe you haven't. If you have not yet, uh, please check out our PKM and Legacy Kai Season 1 recap. It's a sort of animated recap of all the adventures we've had so far on the first season of PKM and Legacy, but done in sort of like an abridged style. A lot of work and a lot of love went into making it, so please go check it out. It's on my own YouTube channel, KVox. Uh, link in the description. But other than that, I think we're ready to get back to the episode. Thanks so much again for tuning in. Happy New Year. Unpause. You said the three of you were meeting up at the park. Is that was the plan? Yeah. Sure. Well, you do that. You do that. Okay, Chris does do that. He walks over to the park. Hey, guys. Hey. Can it be like right when Maddie's like just putting her... her- Putting Bay back in the Pokeball they're walking up. The Bay Bay goes back in the ball ball. She is the Bay Bay. Oh, doing a little training with your Pokemon, eh? That's right. And how'd it go? Oh, it was good. It was good. Um, I'm working on, uh, you know, getting to get Bat Noir out of his comfort zone a little bit. I know I kind of messed that one up, uh, but I think it's going pretty well. Oh, that's good. Wait, where is Bat Noir? Did you put him back in the ball? Yeah, he's already back in. Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, well, glad everything's going well. And yeah. he quickly turns to Velma. And how are you? Oh, uh, fine. I'm good. Uh, I learned something new that Mafia can do. Oh, really? Okay. And she breaks out the rusty Pokeball. What? Oh, so, uh, be careful if you ever play Fetch with Diamond. Uh, if it's anything, if it's anything like Mafia, this will happen. What did Mafia do? Uh, you tell me. She hands him the rusty Pokeball. Yeah. Suddenly, Chris, you have flashbacks to when you were trying to feed uh, Diamond uh, Barry, and it pretty much disintegrated and was absorbed into her gem. His gem. It's gem. Chris just stares at it, slowly hands it back to Velma. Right. Uh, probably should have mentioned that they eat by absorbing slash disintegrating things. So, is, maybe it thought it was food? Is this something we should report back to the professor? Might be a good idea. That sounds like something we should Probably, know. unless that was in her reports and we didn't read it. Well, we could give her a call to check in anyway. Yeah, no, we could actually. Do we all have our, we have our number, don't we? I think we all do. Chris does have the number. Uh, he pulls out a sea gear and... He'll sit on the ground and sort of try to hold it outward so everybody can see. Selfie mode. Yeah. And he'll give Professor Maple a call. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Hello? Hey, how you doing, Professor Maple? Oh, is this Chris? Uh, yes, that is me, the Chris of the Gray. Oh, well, hi there. I haven't heard from you in a bit. Yes, it's uh, been... Actually, shit, how long was it? It's been a good week, I think, since I uh, heard from you when you I gave you the, uh, let you stay at my place. How is my lab, by the way? <laughs> uh, it's good. It, it's, it's, it's good. Mm-hmm. It's, he looks at Velma Maddie. It, it, it's good, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think it's really good. Okay, yeah, it's good, it's good. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not flooded. That is a very concerning specification to me. No, no, it's, it's definitely not. Sorry, did you were 
So you were probably calling to check in on uh, Emily, weren't you? I gave you my number for that, didn't I? Oh, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, we actually called for something else, but I mean, yes. How how is uh, my sweet darling dearest doing? Ah, uh, she's doing great. Last time I checked, uh, she was on her way up to Newton Town. Man, she works fast. Or we work slow. She is alarmingly speedy when it comes to this sort of thing. Hopefully, she doesn't rush too much. She's gonna miss most of the journey that way. Yeah, she's like her mother. Anyway. Yeah, so, uh, Professor Maple, we had a quick question involving the Jewel-type Pokemon. Oh! Yes, uh, sure, go ahead. Yeah, um, we found out they disintegrate things when they eat. Is that, is that concerning? As in, depends on what you mean by disintegrate. I mean, some bug Pokemon spit acid on their food in order to make it more chewable, so, like that? Uh, we think we found out it's Jewel-type. I think it's of a mischievous? I was trying to play fence with it, and, uh, uh, this happened. And she shows the rusted poke ball to the professor. Huh. That is, uh... Huh. Yeah. <laughs> How did it try to disintegrate it? I, I, I'm trying to get a good picture on this. So what? So specifically what happened, I threw it, I said fence. And, mm-hmm. and it started having a laser, and I was like, oh, what? it must be like a charge beam or something, and then it started rusting the Pokeball, and then I was like, okay, that's enough! And so, I didn't know where to go from there, so, yeah. So it was absorbing the Pokeball's vitality, then? If I guess? that could really be applied to it? Huh. That is interesting. Yeah. Look, Professor... I think the third Jewel-type Pokemon we've seen. Do you have any other research on this? We we don't have a lot of answers. The third? Oh, right. That whole thing back at the, uh, that cultist hideout. Right. You guys are doing okay, by the way, right? Well, we are now, but it's all very concerning. Hmm. These creatures are unresearched, really. And if you feel like these are too dangerous to hold... I can contact some people at Mogul Corp. They have this program going on where they're researching these things. They can probably hold it in a secure location oh, for you. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't think that's necessary, right? No, no, I don't think that's necessary. Maybe, maybe it's more... Do you think that maybe we can go to their lab and see the ones that they have there and get some answers? I do know that they do, like, tours over in Mogul City. Uh, maybe you could ask someone there. And see what you can do. That might be a good idea. Uh, well, in the meantime, I got some other work to do. I'm heading out to Mount Ambrosia to do some research real quick. Uh, anything else I can help you with before I head out? Nope. I think that's it. I'm good. All right, great. I'm going to make a quick pit stop at my lab, and then I'm going to head over to the uh, mountains. Okay, just um, be careful, because last time we were there, uh, there was a rogue Psyduck using water gun. A lot. A rogue, rogue Psyduck? Mm-hmm. Using water gun a lot. Uh, uh, yeah. y- y- yes. Yes. A r- rogue so if Psyduck. So things, if things are wet, it's probably why. Make a <laughs> beauty plus perform. Not the worst, not the best. <laughs> Your specifics are becoming more and more concerning. But I will see what sort of damage this rogue Psyduck, the the quotation marks are audible, Mm. (laughs) Uh, what sort of damage they have done. Okay. Well, toodles. Uh, Uh, Click. Rogue Psyduck? How else was I supposed to explain the literal floods that we created? I don't know, maybe by telling her the truth. She's helping us. I don't want to cause more stress for her, or give us, I think or give her a any more. reason not to help us. All right, but if I get an angry phone call, you're answering it. Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Mm. <laughs> okay, and he puts his sea gear away. So, what's on the agenda for today? I think the only thing that we really have left to do in this town, aside from the results of the event, is the gym. But last time we were warned that we would not be strong enough for that. Not that you wouldn't be strong enough. Oh. This gem is tougher than most. I don't know. I may be thinking we need to level up a little bit. So I don't know if we... Can we look at the full map, Kay? Sure thing. Do, 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 do. Like, do we make a stop somewhere, guys, and then come back? And, like, while we wait for the results of the event? Mm. 
We could meet the professor at Mount Ambrosia. That is true, we could. Or we can go towards Mogul. Question, the results, have they come in today? You check your uh, devices. Our you C-mail. <laughs> C-mail. That's a good one, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was I was already earlier trying to think of Pokemon pun versions of uh LinkedIn and Venmo. What was that uh thing called? I think it was in like black and white too. Global Link, was that what it was called or something link? Yes. There you go. So it's Global LinkedIn. I don't know what Venmo would be though. You don't see any notifications. And here you were saying about plans? Uh, we could either meet the professor at Mount Ambrosia, just kind of like happenstance sort of thing, or I feel like we can go up to try and make it to Mogul and maybe hit Cortland City along the way. Do we have to be in town, Kay, when the results are announced? Or can we just head back when they get announced? When they get announced, the tournament afterwards is going to be like two weeks or so. Okay. And then just curiously, is it an option in this, in this campaign like to have a flying type Pokemon that makes travel faster? Yes, though at your current level, that's probably not an option right now. Okay, I just want to to keep that in mind for later. What do y'all think? I'm good either way, or we can go down, but we've kind of explored a decent amount, I feel like, of that area. The only, I think the only thing we hadn't hit was Winnesap, right? So far, what you have not explored is Winnesap and the Swamplands, uh, Newton Town, where the tournament will be taking place. Oh, gotcha. So we'll head there later, probably. Uh, Mount Ambrosia, where... Those legends of Uglatia mm. are said to lead to. There's Cortland City, which is the biggest city on this region, mm-hmm. which is a uh, hop and a skip away from Mogul City, where the headquarters for Mogul Corp are. So I guess we just have to decide what's our first priority. Would it be the Uglatia legends or would it be maybe finding more about the jewel type Pokemon? I'm really good either way. Okay. Question. Who, A, wants to go and meet some literal legendaries, or B, wish to learn more about the jewel type and also have some fun in the city? So you're worried about oh. legendaries being in Mount Ambrosia? I mean, look, if legendaries are there, how are we going to catch them? Yeah, maybe we wait. But I feel like the legendaries are going to be at King's Tower. I mean, well, there's different... Well, okay, wait. So, like, legendaries are completely different from, like, mythics and whatnot, correct? Like, mythical Pokemon? In the games, legendaries are one thing, which they're usually, like, one of a kind, whether in the region itself or in the entire Poke world. Mythics are incredibly rare. Some thought to not even exist. So maybe the mythic would be at Kings and the legendary would be at Mount Ambrosia. That's how the games work, at least. <laughs> but not this game? We'll have to see. Uh-huh. Mayhaps I would prefer going to personally M- Mogul City, okay. but that's mostly because it's like, well, you got you're killing two birds with one stone by yeah. going to Cortland City and then a hop skip over to Mogul City. I agree with that. But what do you two want to do? Because if the majority wants to go to Mount Ambrosia, then that's cool too. No, like I said, I'm good either way for both reasons. I want to check out the city. City, it is. Then let's start making our way towards Mogul and hit Cortland along the way. Because then I feel like we can we can come back once we've trained a little bit for this gym and like while we're making our way back to Newton Town for the the uh, competition, then we can try and maybe hit the gym and pip. We'll definitely need some uh, electric types to take on this flying type gym leader. Yeah, and I just gave away my electric type for a very very cute Pokemon, but <laughs> oh, still, oh, that's right, it it was an yeah. So type. we'll have to find some more along the way. Can you use like a rock type too? Against flying? I think so, but wasn't there something weird where there was like some sort of stipulation where it was only electric? I, I, I'm not really sure. I, I'm having a hard time following. It's fine. We're just talking about the We gym. will get to it when the time passes. Okay. Give me two minutes. Uh, let me find some better maps to use then. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We've caught him off guard. Were we not meant to go to Cortland yet? <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is your choice, so we are going to go by it. All right, guys. We, uh, we're we fast traveling to court. Were you expecting Mount Ambrosia? I was. I thought that was your plan because you wanted to find the mysteries of the mask and Uglashia and all that stuff. But this I is mean, also another mystery you have to find out about yeah. the Joel type. So if you want to head over there, uh, that is good. Yeah. Let me just find some more stuff real quick. We got him. You got me. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Uh, what encounters do I have? Okay. 
I think I got a good enough plan for what to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me just archive these snowy maps. <laughs> Sad. Sorry, Kay. No, it's good. It's good. Gotta stay on my toes. Gotta improve as a DM. Gotta prepare, be prepared for the unprepared. Everything was going to plan until it didn't go to plan. So, the three of you make your way to the north side of town, past the airfield, uh, waiting to take those challenges on when the time is more appropriate for you. You're all healed up. You're all packed up. Uh, any shopping you wanted to do before you hit the road? Uh, mm, can I look at the TM thing again? Sure thing. Uh, in fact, let me just show you the list of shops. Okay. Back at getting technical, they had about four main TMs that you could choose from. You could also uh, do a custom order if you wanted to order a different move in that they don't have. I don't have enough money. <laughs> TMs are expensive. Yeah. Um, I'm good. Well, anyone else? I, uh, I'm good, but now this is making me wonder. When we get to Cortland City, if the prices are this high in Pippin Town, I wonder how high they're going to be in Cortland City. It's the biggest city. Chi-Chi, are you wanting to buy anything? I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm trying to see how much I have, money-wise. Oh, that's more expensive than I thought. Uh, in that case, <laughs> um, I'll get another Pokeball to replace the one that got a rusty. I will say, mechanically speaking, it still would probably work. It's just a cosmetic thing. Oh, okay, so now it's just aesthetic. Yes, I will. I am not going to bullshit you out of one thing you already bought just for flavor. Okay, um, in that case, I'll get an antidote. Antidote? Yeah, sure antidote. thing. Uh, go ahead and uh, remove 250 credits from your wallet and add an antidote to your inventory. All righty then. So, the three of you hit the trail north of Pippin Town, heading to Cortland. It's going to be a, more than a day's journey from there. So, let's get rootin' to it. Nice. Here we go! Blue Skatoo, we can too. So we'll do a little bit of a skill challenge to see how the traveling goes. Uh-oh. <laughs> Who's leading the pack? I think Dom will lead the pack this time. If that's okay with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. So how these skill challenges are going to work, we're going to take turns. You each are going to use different skills in order to navigate to the wilderness and traverse towards your destination. You can't use a skill that's already been used. I'm going to say we're going to start this off as pretty easy. So you're going to need to get... A total of five successes in your three rolls. And if not, a complication may arise. Gigi, we'll start with you. What is Velma going to do to lead the pack here? I guess following the map would be the first thing. Charting the course, I guess. Okay. I'm going to say this is going to be clever plus science. Woo! Nice. Four out of six. You're going to make this a very easy challenge. <laughs> so yeah, you check your sea gear. It's a pretty straight shot for the most part. Just a straight road leading to the northwest through the hillscape. Uh, a couple tree lone trees on the way there. Uh, past that, though, you look at the map, it seems to go into what's marked as the Craglands. A lot of split up cliffs and craggy regions with lots of bridges leading to and fro between it. So it looks like a fractured chunk of land rising in elevation the further north you go. But that's going to be a good while before you hit that. Most of this leg of the journey goes by pretty easily. Who would like to take the next leg of the journey? So just look, just as Velma is navigating us around, Chris is just kind of taking into the surroundings. It's actually not that uncommon for him to sort of get used to certain environments because things start to look a certain way, especially when there's paths lined out getting to certain areas, especially when you're getting closer and closer to a city, it gets more and more. Sorry, the forest gets less and less developed because obviously they need land to make things. And being from Hoenn, it's kind of normal to get used to these things. So he's basically using both the map and also the layout of the area to try to find the correct path to take and avoid, you know, dangerous areas. Okay, so rather than relying solely on the map, you're also using your survival instincts and knowledge of the wilderness to navigate your way. Yes, indeedy. That would be an insight plus nature. That's 
two out of four. Nice. You're used to wandering in the Hoenn wilderness. It's a tropical labyrinth compared to this straight shot path. Mm. The road here has been well traveled. You can even see some tire tracks. Tire tracks? Oh, wow. You remember that this is the road that Angel took in order to get back to uh, Mogul City. Mogul City. That's right. In our little red pickup truck. Oh, yeah. This is a straight shot indeed. But you're also able to uh, just occasionally look to the patches of dense foliage and hillscapes in order to sense if there's any danger. Occasionally you spot a herd of bufalant, a couple flocks of murkrow coming from the craglands. Uh, other than that, though, it's docile. Oh, yes. Reminds me of home. Now, technically, you've already met your your quota for successes, but let's just have Maddie roll for something anyway, just because we have one more roll left. Um, I'm struggling, like, what to do different other than just trudge forward. If you don't think that there's any skills that would face basic navigation, you are more than welcome to paint a scenario, not necessarily a a, uh, hostile encounter, but just a scenario where other skills would shine. Well, my one thought was that I could whilst we're moving along, scout for any, like, materials, either to make dyes or to sew into something. You know what I mean? Just to collect, to have. Right. Okay, you're trying to scavenge. Yeah. All right. In that case, this would be dexterity plus alert. All right, one, two. Most of the region here isn't very dense in terms of usable materials. You... Spot a couple berries, but not quite ready to be harvested yet. That being said, you're able to get materials to make the journey more comfortable. You patch by a couple ponds full of spring water in order to just cool yourselves down in the uh, heat of the autumn sun. Other than that, peaceful journey. Okay. I'll probably try doing that again once we get to the crags. Maybe if I'm lucky, I can find some sort of gems or something for Goonie. uh, No, Mingan's. No, it was Goonie's outfit. As you continue along the path, the road starts to get a little less developed, going into some patches of grass here and there. And in the distance, you did so well that you would be able to hear the sound of a bestial hooting and hollering. (laughs) That's different. That's suspicious. That's weird. If anyone wanted to try and check that out, yeah, understand what sort of creature this is, that would be an in, a clever plus lore. Yeah, I'll roll. Give me more to catch. Gotta catch them all. I got a one out of three. Two out of four. Three out of five for Velma. Maddie, this is a very primal hooting and hollering sort of thing going on. You're not familiar with what sort of creature this would make. Something outside of my region. But for Chris and Velma. You both are from parts of the Hoenn region. You are very familiar with the sound of a wild Vigoroth. Oh. And it looks like it's having a, uh, a little fun time going on in the uh, wilderness. You can also pick up on the sounds of uh, bashing into trees and whatnot. Oh. Followed by booms. Oh. Uh, Chris looks immediately at Velma. Yeah, um, so we're not going anywhere near that, correct? Well, I mean, is there any way around it? It's off into the distance. You can... Do this encounter. You're not forced into it by any means. So if you'd like the chance to uh, encounter this figure off, that's up to you. If not, you can continue on your merry way. Okay, question, everybody. Answer. There, that Pokemon is there, but it's also it, it could be pretty dangerous, but at the same time, experience points. I'm not looking to catch a Vigoroth, but I'm always down for some more training. Mm. And maybe there's going to be something there as well that we weren't expecting. Ooh. Agreed. Maybe they're, maybe they're trying to knock down like a new Pokemon out of a tree. You're absolutely correct. Maybe it could be something like a mythical Pokemon. Ooh, already? You never know. Probably not. It's too early in the game. Well, it's only because every time I say that, Kay goes, Aw, it's cute that you think I'm going to give you a mythical or a legendary this early in the game. <laughs> Well, he did not object to it yet. We well, wasn't the uh, the snake one kind? It was a mythical, wasn't it? It was a pseudo legendary. Pseudo legendary. Like oh. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So we're 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 making steps up. We're making them up. I say we go down there. You know what? Let's go ahead and see what's happening with that Vigoroth. Maybe we say something. Maybe there's a child. You know what? You're right. We don't hear any like cries of other Pokemon or people, do we, Kay? Uh, not with those rolls. Not with those rolls. So you can hear the loud. O- obvious ones, which is the Vigoroth, the uh, clanging around, and the booms. It's 
make our way downtown, folks. Walking fast, it's faces past, and we're, we're homebound. Home <laughs> <laughs> right, hey, and I now I wonder. That's what Maddie and Valmar are just singing all the way there. <laughs> no, nope, been down this route with my daughter. No. Nope. <laughs> so you approach the clearing. And you can see what is going on. It is a Vigoroth wildly swinging at trees. And from those trees pop down pinnacles. Uh-oh. Let's go. And you see the uh, Vigoroth picking the pinnacles up and hurling them at other trees. <laughs> and they oh. self-destruct on impact when they hit the trees, oh. making booming sounds. There's nothing in the trees, though? They're just throwing the pinnacles? Pinnacles are in the trees, and then they're not. <gasps> are they killing them? No, self-destruct does not kill a Pokemon. It just faints them. No, but the ones on the trees... Do. They're hitting the trees. They're not hitting the Pinecos. So are they hitting the trees to get more Pinecos down and they're just having fun? Or is there yes. something in the trees? And as you approach the clearing, it turns to you. <laughs> Battle commence. Oh, boy. Oh, dang. All right. All right, you know what? I've been having a lot of fun with him, so... All right, Victor, let's just... But... Just beat his ass. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> just chucks it out. Well, you got the fighting type right there. I'll send out good. Yeah, and I want to give Bay a try. Go ahead and roll for their initiatives. All right. Oh, I rolled a two. I got a three. Victor got a two. So we start with Goonie. You see on the field a collection of four Pinnacles and the Vigoroth. Oh, looks like these guys he's a little disarming boy. And that's all folks in range, and that would hit. So yeah, go ahead and roll for damage. Alright. Each of their defense is three, so we'll just apply it to all of them. One out of two. Uh, so that's one point of damage to each of them. Goody does a little secret that going up around them. <laughs> and then jumps up in the air and lets out a huge power cord. And then I'm just like <laughs> Ironically, that's also a move that Goonie could probably use, power cord. <laughs> but no, this powerful disarming voice echoes through the forest and buffets them for one point of damage caused by this fey sonic energy. Figaroth is not going to take that lightly. Uh, it is going to uh, shamble forth and just let out a vicious roar of its own with uproar. Ooh. One out of four will hit. I will go ahead and roll for damage. Well, actually, no, it's a random foe. So, I gotta roll a three-sided dice. What that even look like? Go from top to bottom. One will be Whifflepin, two will be Victor, three will be Goonie. Goonie it is. What is Goonie's defense? It is... Two, I think? Is it set? It's just where it says defense, two. right? Two, okay. Yep. Okay, yeah, two. Your defense and special defense, unless altered, would be the same. Okay, cool. That's not how it does in the video games, but I'm too lazy to do that extra leg work. Fair enough. So yeah, uh, Vigoroth lets out a roar right into Goonie's own face. <sighs> Tit for tat. You can see the fur bristles back as it lets out a vicious wave of energy. <laughs> no one's going to be able to sleep right now. And Goonie takes one point of damage. It is Victor's turn. All right, buddy, let's give him a good old leer. Two out of six. That hits. Sweet. Oh. And not only does it hit the Vigoroth, but all foes in range, so all of those Pineco behind it. Yeah. We're trying to help them. As v- Victor lets out a <laughs> monkey to monkey. <laughs> Return to monkey. <laughs> nice. It's taken aback a bit by the viciousness in its glare, as well as its Pineco posse. All their physical defenses are lowered by one point. Good job, buddy. Whifflepin's turn. Uh, I'm going to use Growl. On the Vigoroth. That hits all foes in range. I'm going to use Growl on all foes in range. Two out of three will hit. It's definitely a cute little Growl. (laughs) (laughs) Vigoroth just looks very confused by it. Pineco's eyes kind of like soften like, aww. And their strengths are lowered by one. They don't want to attack the cutie pie. Pineco's turn. Let's see. One Pineco is going to go for the one who attacked them with the disarming voice. Uh, tackle. Uh, tackle. Two out of two will hit. Only one point of damage as it collides into you with its spiky little body. Hops back, lets another one go for Victor for a- another tackle. One will hit. One out of two. You've reduced its strength and your defense is so high that 
it can only hit you for the minimum one damage. Nice. One of the Pineco is just gonna stand and hold back, clear of danger. Uh, this Pineco gets picked up by the Vigoroth and hurled at Victor, and it explodes on impact. Oh, dang. Oh. It also hits everyone in the area as well, so everyone's gonna take the damage. A one out of three will hit. Unless... All right, I gave you guys the window to evade or clash. You didn't say anything, so I'm rolling for damage. Oh, I uh, forgot about that. Too late. Well, hey. I'm sorry, I'm sketching with a pen. I'm kidding. You guys can try and evade or clash if you want to. I will have Victor evade if he can. Just remember that since this is all your second action, you're going to need at least two successes to evade or clash. Goonie's going to try clash. Go ahead and roll for evade. Velma, what move is Goonie using to clash with it? We're going to clash with a scratch. Dry and I both epically failed our evade. We, uh, we're about to take some uh, epic damage. Eat. Victor got a one out of four for the evade. Bay got a zero out of three. Goonie got a one out of three. Unfortunately, that does not clear it. So, <laughs> the pinnacle explodes on impact as you all take four points of damage. Oh, wow. And that means Goonie is out. Oh. Victor is down to its last leg, Oof. as well as Bay. Jeez, old Pete. And Vigoroth looks gleeful with all this destruction. A jerk. I wish to whoop his ass. Any trainer actions? Yeah, can I switch out my Pokemon? Uh, you can do it at the end of the round. Velma, you may recall Goonie and send out a different Pokemon. And go ahead and roll for their initiatives as well. Uh, All right. I'm going to let Chris give Victor a potion. You can do that. Let's see how Mafia does here. Okay, go ahead and roll for Mafia's initiative. And uh, Maddie, who are you sending out in place of Whifflepin? Lucille. Bay is a little bit new. She did her job, lowered their attack, but she needs a break. Uh, Chris, as your trainer action, you said you wanted to give a potion to Victor? Yep. I'll just be using both those units for the healing? Something to note. By giving a potion as your trainer action, for this round, you are going to be in the fray, as it leaves you vulnerable since you're on the field giving him the medicine. That is more than fine. He will sacrifice. You heal it up, and you uh, put the uh, spent bottle aside. It's now back up to three health. Yay! Lucille's turn. Okay, um, we're going to hit one of the pine echoes with an ember. Whichever one's nearest to the Vigoroth. We got a three out of five for accuracy. Go ahead and roll for damage. Defense is three. One, boost it up to a two, because that's a super effective hit. Look, guys, I'm learning types. <laughs> Lucio lets out a blaze of fiery energy as Pineco is taking a lot of heat. Vigoroth is focused on the Mankey right now because he's having fun with another primate. Another uproar. He's locked into that right now, actually. Three out of four will hit unless you're trying to evade or... Actually, I'm sorry. Random foe. I gotta roll a 1d4 to see who I hit. I was gonna say, I was like, wait. <laughs> Chris, you're getting hit. Oh, oh boy. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Would you like to clash or evade? I guess, actually, all you can do is evade. I'm going to have Chris evade for his life. <laughs> Why can't he punch it? Because <laughs> I'm not a Saiyan. Clash is a uh, Pokemon maneuver, not a, a trainer. One out of two... You had no hopes of evading this. I, I did not. <laughs> so yeah, let me roll for damage. What is your defense? My defense is a four. You're a beefy little boy. <laughs> all, the, all the eggless fruit salads he's eaten over the years. You only take one point of damage then from the ear-piercing noise as Vigoroth roars in your face. <laughs> he just does the whole lapis thing of, yeah, I felt worse. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> You see Victor taking more offense to this than he normally does. Oh, oh, he mad. What do you say to him? I just look at Victor and I go, punch him in his smug face. Hit him hard. Hurt him. <laughs> Menke lets out a vicious cry. <laughs> oh my God. As he rushes forth in a blaze of light. <gasps> Wait, what? Wait, I'm sorry, excuse me? Excuse, excuse me? Mankey evolving. He's doing what? He's evolving mid-fight. Out of the light comes out just a hand, crushing an orange berry, wiping it across its face. <laughs> a blue-covered primate emerges from the light, Ooh. calm, focused, ready to strike. Yes! My big boy! <laughs> Your son! My son is evolving! It's a good thing we did this encounter. 
So what does the newly evolved Victor do? He does an absolute horrendous karate chop to this thing. You have the new character sheet for Victor in there. Go Ooh, ahead and my roll. Oh god, yay, dry! Woohoo, look at my boy! It's my boy! Victor, my baby! God, he is so cool looking. Punch him, punch him hard, punch him, but destroy him. Three out of six, and that counts as a critical hit. Woo! He's gonna try and evade this as best as he can but he is going to need to get four successes to do this. I swear to God, if he gets four successes, I'm going to be upset. (laughs) (laughs) He got three out of four. So go ahead and roll for damage. And afterwards, Uh. add two extra dice. The defense is two. Dang, Dre. Oh. (laughs) Six damage. Chris, paint me a word picture. Oh. Oh, yes, I will. So, upon seeing Victor come out of this light in his shining, new, beefy form, all I imagine is as this Vigoroth is trying to reel back, Victor's arm doesn't come out to punch him just yet. It grabs it by the scruff, holding it in place before cocking its hand back and just socking it straight in its face, (laughs) reeling it back towards the other pine hackos. Banana slams him right into the pack. Banana slams! Yes! <laughs> Agitating the Pineco enough to make them explode and sends the vigor off flying into the tree tops. Ding! Chris is going to hug the heck out of Victor now. That's my boy! You are so big! How many potatoes did you eat? You're eating potatoes when I didn't realize it. He, he gives a very calm, focused... <sighs> I'm gonna make sure you get a good meal. <sighs> Jesus, he is... Okay, wait, quick question. How tall would this primate be? Is... Because, like, is it just, like, a normal primate, but with, like, you know, the the markings? I'm going to scan my boy. And pulls out the sea gear and scans him. Dooly, 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 dooly. Primate, the pig monkey Pokemon, and the evolved form of Minky. Their body has adapted to use their rage to supercharge their muscles and blood circulation. The angrier they become, the less access they have to their mental faculties. Very few trainers are capable enough to raise this Pokemon. What was that last part? <laughs> and in terms of the height and weight entries, uh, most primates uh, reach around an uh, average of three foot and three inches and weigh roughly around 70 pounds. This one is just a few inches shorter than that. Oh, Aww, small boy. Tiny boy. My short boy. Short king. <laughs> short king. From your training with it, Especially since that last little calisthenics training, where you tried to give him a more calm but focused uh, regimen, it seems to have done wonders for him. He's not a, a raging machine at the moment, oh. but he's just like battle hardened and ready. He's going to do well in the tournament. He's going to do real well. I will pop him back into his Pokeball and turn to Maddie and Velma. So that happened. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! I'm so excited for yeah, you. I, he's a he's a he's a big boy now. Oh, Chris, you like being a trainer, don't you? I like seeing my Pokemon happy, even if they are. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fine. Yes, I like being a trainer. They're Yay! happy. He was that so hard. Yes. I'm a lover, not a fighter. But they love to fight. I know. Why am I getting all the fighting Pokemon? What the heck? Yeah, you really are. Wait, pause. I just okay. Okay, I just I just realized something. In this in this game, the Pokemon still evolve like normal Pokemon, despite their regional variants. Does that mean that Velma's mischievous is gonna eventually can one day evolve into a Miss Magius? We'll see. Based on what you know, you're not sure if the jewel type Pokemon are capable of evolution. Nothing really points to that direction right now. Mm. But there's a lot to be determined about these creatures, so maybe in time you will find out. I was just waiting for a... Mm. Okay, thanks, God. Who are you talking to? (laughs) Uh, This bit has not gotten old at all. (laughs) No, it has not. (laughs) I actually only have used it once. That was the only the second time. Oh, no, I'd use it a lot in any sort of tabletop game. Yeah, Dry knows I was looking at him through the (laughs) screen. (laughs) So, the three of you continue on the path back onto the main proper road to Cortland City. 